everybody has to find their own relationship with God. Yeah. There is not a husband or a wife that's going to redeem you. A relationship that is romantic will never be enough. Right. Anyway, cheating. What are your thoughts? People genuinely, I think, give up on a marriage because mm -hmm. they think there's a better option somewhere else. I think there are a lot of people sitting in our church. There are a lot of people listening to this podcast mm -hmm. that I'm might be cheating. living a double life. They might be yeah. cheating on their spouse or their girlfriend or their boyfriend. If I need to seek a thrill outside of the marriage, mm. do I understand marriage? Yeah. I didn't know how to do romance. Mm. I didn't have a working model of what a good relationship looks like. Mm. So does that mean that you and I have never found another person outside of our marriage attractive? Oh, here's the question. I knew it was coming. All right, welcome to week three of the Relationships week Podcast. Three. Let's go. We are here and we are talking about is it possible to turn your marriage around, yes. to fix it, to break cycles, to get it, um, get it back get it off back. the back of infidelity. Mm, yes. Abuse, um, mistrust, all sorts of things we're going to go in. And today we actually have a bunch of questions we that we're going to read off and go through. And um, there's some big ones. There's some mm -hmm. really, there's, there's juicy ones. There's <laughs> wow. And I think they're all <laughs> wow. very real, <laughs> which is good. And so, yeah, we're going to explore all the things yes. and yeah, see where we go. Odds. Yeah. What are your thoughts on can a marriage be turned around? I 100% believe that a marriage can turn around. Um, whether you're in a rut, whether you're just in a low, um, or if you're coming off of the back or find yourself in some mm -hmm. pretty deep hot water as a marriage, I believe you can turn it around, absolutely. Is there ever a moment that you can't turn it around? Is there a moment where it's too far? Mm -hmm. Is there Are there scenarios where it's like, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's done. I believe that as well. I believe that some relationships, the best way forward is for them to end. But I yeah. think uh, that happens around some pretty extreme circumstances. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a firm believer that God can do anything. God can change anything around in our lives. Um, I, I just believe that we just have to be willing and we have to go in 100%. Like two people can't go in one at 50, the other at 45 no, or 50. Definitely. Like everyone yeah. involved has to go in 100% mm -hmm. in order for it yeah, I to think turn in a, around. In a sense, it's, I think there are obviously things that are, you know, I guess you go too far. You can, you can break someone's trust. You can yeah. misuse the word sorry so many times or I'm yeah. going to change or I'm never going to do it again to the point where it's, it's just gone. Yeah. But at the same time, if everybody's willing to yes. work at it, anything can be redeemed. Yes. Like anything can be changed, anything can be shifted. And I think that's kind of like the big part of it. And yeah. that's what I love what you just said, if it's not 100%. And I think even for us, we broke major cycles in our marriage. And it yeah. was really when we both yeah. took 100% responsibility and ownership and, and all things. And on top of that, obviously, we're coming to you today from sitting across people for yeah. almost 20 years now and or actually 20 years. And so yep. it's doable. But you, you spoke on this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I believe it was maybe the first um, the first message that? around the relationship series. Um, and I loved how you didn't necessarily go for I can't remember. how a relationship can change in terms of like behavior modification or mm -hmm. the interactions with one another or how to, how to yep. basically resolve conflict. You went super fundamental, like, okay, if, if this is going to work, you need to have a relationship with God, which is that's mm -hmm. foundational. And then the following week, you started to address thinking. And as we enter into relationships, we often want the other person to come in and complete mm -hmm. us or we're drawing strength or drawing everything that we need um, from, from our partner uh, because yep. there, there may be some insecurities, there may be some, um, mm -hmm. you know, just some unfortunate things that have happened in life that you just want your partner to fill the gap and to kind of put that expectation on your partner, you can fracture not only your partner, your marriage, mm -hmm. your husband or wife, yep. but you're gonna 
fracture everything, your life. And so I think um, on this topic of repairing a marriage, two parties, completely involved, completely aware of where they need to grow. But I also think you have, you have to take a step back and you have to stop pointing the finger at the other person and you almost have to go before God yeah. and you almost need to have mm -hmm. time, whether it could be before God, counseling, communication, yeah. everything that you can possibly do as an individual first to be able to yeah. then repair marriage. I think at the end of the day, it sounds like a cliche, but everybody needs Jesus. Yeah. And I think without Jesus, I don't know how people do change. I right. don't know how people do hope or breakthrough. And I think that you can sometimes lose trust in the person you're doing relationship with, but maybe salvage trust because of the Jesus in them. Hmm. Like, hey, we all slip up. We fall, we yeah. fall into grace, but at the same time, I might've lost trust with you, but you're showing me that you still have something going with God and I know what God can do. And because of God, there can be trust. Right. And I think that is a, a thing that I think is huge. Um, I don't know as well how you go through all the things that you've been through, which a lot of the questions we're gonna go through today are actually really the culmination of like people being either abused before marriage, mm -hmm. um, maybe pre Jesus, uh, a lot of infidelity in mm -hmm. the marriage. And then how do you, how do you get back from that? Yep. And so I think that everybody has to find their own relationship with God. Yeah. There is not a husband or a wife that's going to redeem you. A relationship that is romantic will never be enough. Right. And if you can get that, at least some of the lift, the weight on the marriage is going to be lifted so that it can heal, so that patterns can break, yeah. so that things can shift. And I think that's, that's key. So yeah. I think we've got some really good questions today yeah. and um, we can dive into them. Yeah. I think they go and range all over the place and I hope they speak to you and in the future, you might be able to submit some as well. So which one's the first one that grabbed your attention? What's, where are we starting with it tonight? Okay. So cheating what's your take on it and infidelity in marriage mm -hmm. so what's your take on it this is this one has come to our table our doorstep conversations mm -hmm. in um the 20 something years we've been in ministry and um i i definitely feel it's a case-by-case -case situation mm -hmm. i think the advice and the counsel um looks different um in a way mm -hmm. because you've got two stories or you have multiple stories basically developing or unraveling or unrolling. Right. And so anyway, cheating, what are your thoughts? What's your take on it? Especially in marriage. Um, man, you got to know it's the ultimate betrayal of trust. I think it is one of the Oof. most difficult yeah. things to go through. Yes. Um, I think a few things. I think what comes up to mind is what is cheating? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Definition. Like, what, where is, where does cheating start? Where, what is the definition? Okay. If there's not been anything physical, is it cheating? Right. right. Is it cheating if it's been, I don't know, just. Yeah, where, where does that start? Where does it go? Yeah. Um, I think that's a big one. Yeah. And I think if people a few weeks ago asking, well, when, wh what constitutes sex? Mm -hmm. If the lines are blurred on sex, then I think the lines are going to be blurred on cheating. I think it, in some ways, everyone has a different line hmm. of what, what, is, what is cheating. Yeah. There's a term micro cheating, I think. Micro cheating. Where it's like walking around and maybe like um, having, I think it was like glances or like, just having like entanglements of some sort, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, that's a thing. There's, um, I don't know. How is that quantifiable? Right. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But well, let's look at it from a biblical sense. it goes sense. to the heart. From a biblical sense, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you think it, if you're yeah, that's so good. fantasizing in your mind over it, mm -hmm. if you're imagination is taking you mm -hmm. to places you might not physically be there but your mind is already yeah. there yeah. and your mind takes you places that your heart will so then does that end mean up. You, if that's happened does that mean you tell your partner 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, you and I have a pretty open yeah. relationship. We talk about a lot of stuff. Well, we don't have an open relationship. Oh, <laughs> no, just, we did not have an open relationship, just people. Thought I'd just put that out there. Open in communication, like, wow, please. These are very progressive pastors. These, and, we are not uh, progressive a, in that what way. What a podcast. I mean, yes. We thought week one was get to know the pastors. Well. No, week two. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, but I think Rewind. what you're saying is we'll talk about everything and anything over yes. the years. Yes. I think honesty is important. Um yeah, all those things I think are huge. Yeah. Um, I think there's a clear line of cheating, obviously, as well. But I love what you said about the heart because Jesus really does move the marker for what is good and what is not. Right. And he goes down to the heart's motivation. And I've once heard a saying that, you, you know, your body can't go where your mind and your emotions haven't already mm -hmm. gone first. Yes. And if you can, like, capture that, I think yeah. you've already stopped something that maybe can become more irreparable. Yeah. Another fact on cheating is that it is... Um, for a woman, yes, she is much quicker to forgive a man if he has a physical affair without emotional attachment. Mm. And for a man, it is easier to forgive a woman if she has had an emotional attachment without physical interactions. Interesting. And it speaks a little bit to the different value sets possibly that are innately um, in men now. Obviously, some people are going to be different, but mm. there's that. Um, and then m maybe later we'll share about... I heard a really interesting podcast on keys on how to uh, piece back together a, yeah. um, a, a marriage that has gone through infidelity. So let's put a scenario together. So mm -hmm. let's say there's a couple mm -hmm. who's married. They've been married for 15 years and the wife is suspicious and has some inclination that her husband is cheating on mm -hmm. her and she finds some text messages on the phone and emails and mm -hmm. does some investigation and um, confronts her husband about it. And he confesses to her mm -hmm. that yes, he has been cheating on her. Um, and let's further the scenario where you have two people who are deciding to stay in the marriage, right? Mm -hmm. But they have now this big thing Mm -hmm. you know, before them. Yeah. So from the woman's perspective of how does she approach taking the marriage forward? Yeah. And then from his perspective, yeah, how does I've, he end up winning her over again yeah. and building that, tr that bridge of trust with her? Yeah. I, I think a few, these are where my, this is where my mind goes. I think one thing that I've definitely changed my mind on as I've gotten older has been the idea that um, because one person isn't tending to the marriage well, mm. um, it's almost like the, hey, you both played a part in infidelity. And whilst I can kind of understand the concept and I did before and I was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I also think like the other person didn't cheat. So it's not like a cause and effect reality. It's not like, no, but they did this. So cheating was inevitable. It's like the reality is it is a decision. Right. And this kicks into me on the repair portion of it. Yes. Because if there is not responsibility taken, full responsibility taken, then the reality is I don't think it's fixable. Okay. Because I just don't think that that's the way it goes. I just mm -hmm. don't think that um, one push someone into the arms of the other. Now, like, yeah, because I think this at the end of the day, if it was going to be over, end it before you start something else. Yes. So there's that. My second thought is, okay, from the woman's perspective and from anyone's perspective in a way, but in this scenario, I think you got to make sure that there's actual repentance. There's mm -hmm. actually, man, I messed up. Yes. And I think you got to be careful how you play it because I think that there is some people have been able to walk this out, stay in the same home and that is awesome. But when the person's not apologetic, Hmm. I think that all of a sudden, sometimes the lack of there being a standard creates an opportunity to create a pattern. Mm -hmm. And some people become serial cheaters because what they actually don't realize is the value of the person that's across from them. They don't mm -hmm. understand the value of together. And there's been just too much leeway, if you will, or so much that they just don't shift. Yeah. So there's that. So how does the, I think that's got to be viewed and watched. I think if it's becoming multiple times, that's something that's, I think you got to start walking away. Right. I think though, if they're staying in it and, and working at it, you also got to think the person cheating could have also left. 
So their desire to stay has some merit and yes. some points to it. Yep. I think that the person cheating, this is what I heard in this podcast that I thought was interesting, was that it just said through this kind of survey that if the person that has inflicted the wound mm. Mm. makes it a pointed effort to bring it up and apologize more than the person being wounded brings it up, it actually goes a long way to mending the marriage. Yeah. Because basically what it's saying is you've not moved on and you realize how much you've hurt me. Mm. And I think that's huge. Yeah. I also think that there has to be mile markers of trust. And I do think that what this allows for is redefining the terms of the relationship and really talking about the stuff that maybe wasn't talked about, which led to the scenario that they're in. Mm. And so I think the good thing about things being broken is you get to choose how you put them back together. Yeah. And I think that that is crucial um, for that to, to work. And I think honestly, yeah. I, on honesty, you know, like honesty and, yeah. and don't drip it. Like don't mm. small like bits, drips and drabs, because that's only going to, one, it, it keeps hurting the person. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think it just creates this, um, again, lack of trust. And I think mm. get it all out at the beginning mm. so that they go, well, I, I can, there's no more to this. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then something that I heard on the new podcast with um, Carl and Laura Lentz was, he said something that I thought was brilliant was that if you are cheating and you're not saying anything under the pretense that you're, you're, hurt, you're, you're helping them, mm. the reality is you're hurting them. Because like you said, she had an inclination. Yeah. She's like, something's up. Yeah. And that to me is like, the worst thing. Yeah. And so I think there's some things that come to mind and things that, you know, I've sat across from people and kind of realized, oh, that that's kind of key if that happens. Yeah, definitely. It's going to take a lot of work either mm -hmm. way. And, um, and I think some people decide to stay in the marriage because for the woman to leave mm -hmm. from her perspective, it might be more work for her to leave the marriage and start a life all over again. And, you know, that's daunting, that's scary. And so I think some women stay because they're willing to do that kind of work yeah. than the work that requires them doing it alone. But I don't know, like, again, there has to I think to that be, goes for both people, right? Like, yeah. I think as I'm getting older and I'm watching people's lives, I'm going, there's, there's, there's no easy Break no. up. There's no easy breaking up a marriage. Right. That's not just going to, that's not easy. Yeah. But if it's not easy though, when is the point that you just got to do it anyway though? Because mm. one of the questions we have is what do you do when someone's become a serial cheater? Right. Like there's been infidelity that keeps happening. Yes. And the phraseology in the question was what do you do when um, you're devalued mm. by somebody in the marriage having just repeating infidelity? Yeah. At that point, no matter the cost, yeah, there's got to be, a, I, in my opinion, I would say walk. Walk. Walk I away. Would. I, I mean, know what you think. No, I, I agree. I mean, I put myself in that position and I start thinking about what that looks like emotionally and, and physically and, and all of it. And um, I think if you, you're going through that mm. same process of being hurt over and over and over again, when is enough enough? Mm -hmm. And if that person that's hurting you, your, your husband or your wife, they're not coming in and they're not getting help for themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. I think you're just going to be in a really messed up place forever. Yeah. And so I, I know, and, and I think that's a little taboo in the Christian world, right? To tell somebody to, to divorce their husband or divorce their wife. Right. Well, at least yeah. I think in these maybe grounds, a little bit like more old yeah. school, right. Or it's, you know, no, work it out. No, forgive, no, stick it out, stick it, you know, just, just don't worry. It's going to get better. And I think wishful thinking is not going to change. If nothing changes, nothing, nothing changes. changes. And um, yeah, I think again, two people, 100% yeah. meeting in the middle to make it work. It's I, imperative. I, maybe the, the, the redeem, the, the, the believer in redemption and the romantic side of me would also sometimes think that the beginning of salvaging a marriage can be ending it. No one's saying you can't get back together, mm. but there is something sometimes about finality that makes you actually wake up. Mm. 
And also sometimes some things have to end for them to start again. And you can start them with it. I mean, we've heard of people that have been married and then it didn't work out. And then years mm. later got remarried. Like there's something yeah. about that, um, that, that can work. And look, I don't wish that this is an extreme case, but I do think that in the areas of abuse, someone, we had some other questions around that. And yeah. I think you do have to, at some point, I think you're not holding on to faith and hope. And also I would say this, that is individual. Hmm. We, we've had people in church that have had the grounds for divorce and yet they have just felt from God stay. Hmm. And my hat goes off to them. Yeah. And I've seen that multiple times actually not ever work out. But on a few occasions, I've watched the people actually restore the marriage, if not for a, a season. Hmm. But man, there's something about, I think ultimately, if we needed to answer this question easily, if you just keep growing, if you just keep changing, hmm. if you lean into God, your marriage will last. Hmm. I think if you're really there, not just showing up around it, if you're there, I, I think you're going you're gonna to make it. Yeah. You got to dig deep and you've got to do the work though. Mm -hmm. You've got to be committed to doing the work in order for that to happen. So- well are you going to say something? I was just going to say, what makes you want to do the work and how do you fight the possible deception that goes on? Like um, people genuinely, I think, give up on a marriage because mm -hmm. they think there's a better option somewhere else. Ooh. They get rem Sometimes the, the cheating or the road to cheating or divorce starts not with a romantic entanglement with someone else, but with the idea that could be someone else, that this could be better. It could be easier. So do you think that's why men cheat for that very reason? Oh, shoot. I don't, we went to the men. I uh, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> don't ask, know. let's ask the question. I was kind of talking in general. No, let's quite, get specific. Right, why do why? men cheat? Because I think there are a lot of people sitting in our church. There are a lot of people listening to this podcast mm -hmm. that might be cheat? living a double life. They might be yeah. cheating on their spouse or their girlfriend or their boyfriend. And I, I think some people can't help. They can't help it. I think they, they, they like the attention. They like the thrill of it. They like the value it brings. Yeah. Um, and then some people may have some kind of, I yeah, don't look, know, addiction to you, it. You, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've had that. We've had we've that. We've seen that. We have seen that. Um, I don't know. You can answer why men cheat. I think that there are some things that I see as prevalent social cultural constructs at the moment that are going to mm. um, put people in a position maybe where they're more susceptible to it. Yeah. Where the decision to cheat is made easier. I think we see a lot of uh, this subject of toxic masculinity, which is basically anything that is innately very man and very manly has mm -hmm. now become toxic. Right. And I think that the minute you start taking away from what makes a man a man, the uh, the essence of a man that wants to fight for you, the man that will go to war, the man that will stand up for you, you start belittling that ego and saying that it sucks. Or at the end of the day, I think one thing that is in pretty like much found across most men is that men crave respect right. from a woman. You, you want your yeah. woman to look at you like you are it. Hmm. Like, man, I, I love you. I respect you. Like there is just this sense of if you want to be seen to be that in anyone's eyes is your wife's eyes. Mm. I think that sex is a huge thing. I think um, it's how, I think it's intended in marriage. Paul says it, if you're gonna take a break from sex, don't make it for too long, come back together that neither of you would be tempted by the enemy. Mm. I think that it is a huge, um, like overarching shared need that most men have. But by that same token, I don't in, like sit there and go, well, if you haven't had sex, that's enough for you to go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but I think that, I don't know that there isn't, an, this is why men cheat or why women cheat. Mm. I think that maybe there are roads to how we cheat differently through gender. But yeah, you said some things that just make me think, well, that's got to do with your own brokenness. Brokenness. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if, if I need to seek a thrill outside of the marriage, mm. do, I understand the, do I understand marriage? Yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah. Did I grow up seeing that? Yeah. Have I had multiple partners before? Does that make me, I don't, I don't know, mm -hmm. like the value system of something, you know, if you don't yes. want that to break, I don't know. I think that matters. Yeah. 
Definitely. I mean, I think about us and our marriage. Mm -hmm. I think about me personally. And, um, you know, we've been married 17 years, going on 18 years. And um, just the idea of cheating or the idea of fantasizing about somebody else. Like, I... I don't know if it's just the conviction or I don't know if it's the commitment to our marriage and to you and knowing that, I mean, yeah, there's just that vow to just my yes and me spiritually, mentally, physically, everything, right. Belonging to you. Right. And, um, and I, I think about people that cheat and I just, I feel like, throughout my own journey, like I've always just had blinders on. I've Mm -hmm. always just had this like, no, that's wrong. No, like not that I've ever even thought about doing it, but as I've thought about the people that we counsel and give Mm -hmm. advice to, I go, what would I do if I was in that? I'm like, I like, I'm, I could not even see myself there because I think the commitment and the vow for me, it's like, no, my loyalty Mm -hmm. and, everything like is just all wrapped in this word yes yeah. to you and um and so yeah i just for me this whole concept of cheating i, I really want to see people kind of work it out and and see it through mm-hmm. and preserve yeah. a marriage because I think there's something in that. There's something when you say yes to somebody Mm -hmm. and and that vow and that commitment, like, no, they, this is good. This Mm -hmm. is godly. This is, you know, God breach. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, I think that it just makes me think, you know. So does that mean that you and I have never found another person outside of our marriage attractive? Oh, here's a question. I knew it was coming. Because it, it's been a little it bit that? of a hot topic for us. But even just in general, like I think for people, like yes. I think hearing us, it sounds like, okay, here are these two pastors. They don't struggle with it. They've not struggled with it. But in the sense of the line, I, I think I like the subject because I think it's realistic and I yeah. think it's good. And I think we've had a journey with it. Um, and yeah, we've had a really interesting journey with it because we have. we've been together since I was 19. You be, you were, no, I was 20. You were 21. Yep. Older woman. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> All the time. and no, I think, um, there were seasons where like when we first started, I didn't have a good understanding. And I came from like the club world. I came from so much infidelity that I was like, anything could be that. And then there was also a season of you going, Oh, actually when I say certain things that actually isn't really great. Like I, or whenever I've, Mm -hmm. you know, there's been certain moments. uh, And so it kind of corrected over the course both ways, but then mixed with our own brokenness for a minute, it was just whatever. I don't know if we go into it into this podcast. I know you want to, and I think we, we, I want us to go into the, um, what we've personally struggled with and how we've overcome. Right. Yeah. But sure. I'm thinking we've got like all these questions and I'm also, but I just wanted to put that one out there. Does this mean what we're saying? Does it mean that you'll never find someone else attractive outside of your marriage? Yes or no? I think you're going to find people attractive. Mm-hmm. I think that that's the reality of life. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's what you do with that. It's again, how you entertain that thought Mm -hmm. and how you, um, position yourself in that, um, that really matters. And so I don't know if we want to get into it net here, but, um, yeah, I I, I definitely think that's the case. We got questions, questions. but for another podcast, we'll talk about a bunch of that stuff. Um, there was a lot, there was a lot, even with our different love languages and how we perceive, uh, or how we feel loved. And it played into that subject yeah. and it was, a, it was a journey. And, and there's actually more to that as well. When you consider us leading together, there was dynamics on just my struggles, her struggles. So, okay. So about. one of them is, um, how should you go about trying to reshape your relationship for the better? Yeah. How, how, how do you, <laughs> how do you think we do that? Um, man, I, I think a lot of conversation. Yeah. I was going to say that. That's good. A lot of, um, just being real and open about where you're at and, um, being in a place where you can hear your partner and hear your, mm-hmm. 
your wife or your husband fully express where they're at and mm -hmm. not getting defensive about where they're at. Yeah. Um, I think. How uh, do you not take it too personal then? Because, you know, get defensiveness, personal, is there a key you would yeah. say on how do you be big enough to create a marriage that can foster honesty? Because, mm. like, nothing's off the table and nothing's going to turn into, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it, do you have any keys on that? Any thoughts? I mean, I don't think we did it 100% great. Um, I think there were moments where you were trying. you did it pretty well. Uh, no, I. I think there were moments, <laughs> oh, a lot of moments in our, in our relationship where you were trying to tell me where you were at. And I think by mm -hmm. nature, your, your words guide, like you've used very strong language. Mm -hmm. I think you're very, um, I don't want to use the word extreme because that would be like, it would make you wrong. But I think you're very black and white about what you feel and you're very forward and it's very firm. And so when I don't agree with the totalitarian statements that you make about the situation or me, that's where I get defensive. I think I'm, I'm expressive and you're literal. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. I just smiled. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Expressive. Whatever, guys, just figuring out marriage here on the podcast. Yes, working but it's true. It out. I'm very expressive, and I'll say something to give you the like the full breadth of what I'm thinking, it's, feeling, it's and you're not like just the breath. It's like the impact. Yes. Your words have so much impact that they almost yeah. crush me, oh, and yeah, they, have they have crushed me. They have, yeah. And so I've had to be like, wait, 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 and I haven't done that right because I think. I don't let you talk because I cut you off and I'm like, mm. well, that's not, that's mm -hmm. not right. And blah, blah, blah. So I, I think, um, I think understanding each other and how mm -hmm. we're wired yep. and understanding that I'm literal and mm -hmm. you are super expressive. Mm -hmm. I think going into conversations, you're just like, oh, he's just, that's what he's doing right now. Yeah. This isn't personal, but he's just mm -hmm. letting me know where he's at. Yeah. And um, I think that comes with ma like you mature over time yeah. and you truly get Hopefully. to not only know the other person, but you get to know yourself in this relationship, which I feel like I had to learn me in this relationship. But even like a huge turning point was the wor one of our worst seasons was pandemic. Mm -hmm. And man, up until this year, this year has been a redeeming year. Yeah. But from 2020 to now to 20 to the beginning of 2024 was some of our most trialing years. Yeah. But what I loved and I commend you for is that I thank God. And this is for everybody that's going through something. And I know we've spoken a lot about like, hey, what's the precedence? Does it mean that just because there's no sex in the marriage or there's this or that, that cheating is an option? No, we're trying to say that's not an option if it has become a thing. I do think it can be redeemed if we haven't already made that clear. And I think that what 2020 to 2024 showed us was that tough seasons are actually a gift and yeah. the Bible speaks wow. about it. But when pressure from the outside came and hit you, yes. you went into fight mode mm. and your fight was through growth. Yeah. And the growth in you put things back on the table in our marriage to yes. talk about that hadn't been in the past. Yeah. And actually we evolved and yeah. we grew and things shifted. Yeah. And you were for the first time able to communicate things in such a way that gave me an opportunity to yeah. even grow. Because it was like, there was a, my impact made you shut down sometimes or yes. you'd say something and I just like done. So anyway, I say all that to say that I think one of the key ingredients that shifted our marriage and will shift your marriage is ownership. Mm. Like yeah. not really seeking to be understood, but seeking to understand, I think is more powerful than seeking to be understood. Yeah. And I think that changed in us yep. and it changed us. Yeah. I think, um, man, I go back to that time and I just reflect on just my whole being in my mm -hmm. state of mind. And I, I think a lot of what I was going through uh, that I was projecting in our marriage mm -hmm. was that I lacked such a self-assurance mm -hmm. and here's a strong guy just so like knows what he thinks, know where he stands, has the ability to give expression to it. And here I am going, I need time to process this. I need time to figure this out. And I think you're more of like a, let's get it out. Let's talk. 
I'm going to confront this. I'm more of like, you come at me, I'm going to shut down. Yeah. And it's more so because of this lack of self-assurance mm-hmm. and this maybe I, we've talked about this too. I've, I've, I've had issues in the past and I've worked through these issues of low self-esteem. Which I never would have thought Low because you self-esteem. don't have it on the visual side, although you don't sit there and say like, I'm an ugly girl or anything. Mm. You never, I've never heard you be that way, but you, I just think that's what I'd experience with girls. Usually it was like mm. aesthetic. No. And you don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, just, that part, I don't even care about that part. For me, it's like the other stuff, like what I can bring to something, the value mm-hmm. I bring to something, the impact, the meaningful things of life that I am meant to carry or or add. And I mean, mm-hmm. there were years in our marriage, even in ministry, Chris, that I would sit at tables and I mm-hmm. wouldn't speak up. I was such a reluctant leader because I lacked so much. Yeah. And it's weird because I want to say confidence, but it, it it's a weird play, right? On, on just this whole thing of yeah. lack of self-assurance. I felt confident and I felt like I knew I had an identity in Christ and I knew what I was made mm-hmm. for, but in, at the same breath, yeah. I just didn't have, I felt like I lacked the tools and the essentials to be able to fill those shoes uh, in a way. Yeah, and, and you, I guess you're, you're bringing it all up and it's reminding me of everything and I'm thinking of what I said, maybe we don't go into because we don't have time, right, but right, maybe right. this is just where it's heading, is that, our own brokenness and propensities. And you came from a pretty together home that people would look from the outside and go, oh, wow, she's got mm-hmm. it all together. I came from like some brokenness, broken family and all that kind of stuff. But it was funny how like at the end of the day, you can't help but not be the healthiest version of yourself. And you've always got to grow. Like you're mm-hmm. always going to get there. And it was really seeking to understand each other that made sense of what was happening mm-hmm. and made each other grow. So mm-hmm. there was like that insecurity and, and, and that sense of like, you're not enough and that uh, you're not a big believer in yourself mm. that would come through in our marriage. And then I didn't know that's what it was. Yeah. And then my strength would make you shut down further. But what I was looking for was that respect, physical intimacy, yeah. and even just words of affirmation are a big thing. Yes. And to what you said as well, like there was a season where like, I was like, I know something's up here mm. and you were so nervous to have me meet like your family and to come back, you wanted it to work so much that even in the earliest days of our marriage, there was this underlying trying to change me, Mm. but without you're you're a nice person, you're good and you're kind and you're nice. Mm. And so therefore you've always had my feelings in mind. And so you don't want to tell me things. So you beat around the bush, but I'm a black and white person. I feel safe with black and white. Mm. Like I feel safe with tell me how it is. Like, I feel safe like that. Cause I go, yes. if you can say the, the hard thing, we're good. Right. Like I could trust that. Yeah. So for years. And I, I shied away from that. And I think I, you, I, I feel like you lost trust. Yeah. I did me. for a bit. You did. You didn't trust the things that I would say when mm-hmm. I would, when I was being honest, you know, just with you or yeah. with anything, even around this whole thing about finding other people attractive. I yeah. felt like I was just so like, oh my gosh, like I, no, you can't find anyone else attractive. You know, that that's hurtful. Like that's bad. That's wrong. And I felt by having that stance and, and, and just, you know, even if there was someone attractive, I would literally just be like, oh my gosh, like malfunction. And I would just like, like, leave or I would just like, I don't know. It made me nervous because I knew that if I would be confronted with the question in in the future or even in the present, yeah, I I didn't want to lie to you. And so, but I did also have a conviction about it too. Like I never had a wandering mind or I never like entertained those things, but this whole situation made me think about it. And then it, it made me think about it to the point where it was like, it was almost a, um, it just became like this embellished thing mm-hmm. in the back of my mind that started to overtake yeah. my view or and just the situation. All there around. was also this kind of thing where you weren't very verbal with me cause I'd hurt you and you went, you just went that way, but you would verbally had commented on like, mm-hmm. Oh, he's cute or he's whatever. And not even a big deal, but I was lost in this. I'm sensing 
there's something you're trying to change in me. You don't say anything about me. And for being a words yeah. of affirmation person, yeah. I didn't know where to find myself in our marriage. Yeah. And um, there was a long time of you like going, oh, that's not a thing, that's not a thing, until we actually then started to speak about things and going, well, mm. and things shifted. And then there yeah. was a lot of me going, well, why are you so locked up? And it was because I don't lean in. Mm. And so these things in us perpetuate problems. Yeah. And build narratives. Mm. The lack of conversation builds a narrative. When you say I didn't lean in, what does that mean? Can break it down. Um, man, I think that in you, there was just, you were just complex to me and I didn't understand the way you tick. Mm. And because I didn't understand that I made stories about what I saw in my mind, mm. grew distant or grew frustrated. And you made stories in your mind about what I was yeah. because I'm black and white and because I'd said some things. And I think something innately in you was that there was this sense of like, um, I had a massive, like my world at the beginning was super unhealthy and I had a super depend. I was hyper dependent on words of affirmation Yeah, and that created a problem. And then secondly, I think be just even ex having a sexual past and then us having a marriage and me just going, I don't know where, how does this, how does intimacy, how does intimacy work for you who didn't have like this driving force behind it that was around lust. You just kind of had preserved yourself. So then I didn't realize that if I don't take care of your soul, like if I don't love you well and have the conversations, that's not activating in you, mm -hmm. which made me feel even more rejected, right? right? And then you had this thing where you've always kind of felt, I don't know if shame's the right word, but hearing your stories of when you grow up and all the things and how you just kind of went the straight and narrow. If you knew something was wrong, you just, kind of shut down and just never did it again. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got this guy being super black and white. Yeah. It's making a recipe for absolute. Yeah. Cold, dark disaster. Yeah. And you're staying distant. Cause you're like, if I trust him with anything, he's going to hurt me with words. Yeah. And I'm staying distant because I'm like, if she really loved me, then she'd be close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was for years we fought, around other subjects, but these were the problems. Yep. Does, does that even, I don't even know if it makes sense. It makes, I'm kind of pro, I mean, we've never perfect, kind of perfect sense talked to me. people about it. We've, you've referenced, we've referenced it in preachers and we've referenced it. At, not um, like this though. I not think at this, this clarity. So I don't know if it's making the sense. Granular, yeah. Yeah. Of our does lives. that make sense what I said? It does. It does make sense. I think whenever I would try to open up about where I was at with something, um, I often got met with a solution yeah. or how I needed to change or thing. I needed to grow or I needed to change my perspective. And I think Man, yeah. that really, that frustrated me so much because all I want, I'm like, I, <laughs> I know remember. that I have to grow. I know I need to change. I know I need a fresh perspective. I need to blah, blah, blah. And all I just wanted was somebody to like hear me out and just be like, it's going to be okay. Do you remember where that changed? <laughs> Do you remember like the key moment? There was a moment that it sparked the change. Uh, I don't know. I think I should. This is I like, I think this. a testament to learn <laughs> your love, like your partner's language. Yeah. We were like at uh, Umami Burger when it was good. Um, Umami Burger. Wow. Just saying Go it. Back. Um, and we were uh, sitting there and it was the same subject or it's going, you'll never be a friend to me. You're never going to be. And that would hurt me. Cause I'm like, I oh, want to be I a friend to you. This. Yeah. And, and you go, well, I want you to, what do you do for your friends? And I was like, this is what I do for my <laughs> friends. And you were like, and you had a moment and I was like, what do you do with your friends? And you explained it and you explained how it's like, my friends are there for me. They support me. They tell me you're all right. You're good. They listen. They tell me you've got this, but they don't give me solutions. And I was like, I, I remember I got this. I, yeah. I could do that. Yeah. And then months later, something happened and I smiled and you're like, why are you smiling? I was like, this is my moment. This is my moment. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a friend. I was like, I got some tea. We're on the lounge. You know, when girls like they just legs are up. I was like, let's go. You got this girl. Wow. Like I started language that I've never used before, but I finally learned and it wasn't, didn't solve it, but it was the beginning. I think yeah. of us or me at least yeah. learning. I'm a slow learner. I didn't even learn how to read between the lines. Honestly, Chris, my biggest fear was just you were <sighs> not interested really? in it. Yeah. And I interested think interested in what? 
in just me and what I had to say, yeah, it just felt like it was more of a burden or it was inconvenient. And I think that's also why I, cause you just wanted to get into like fix, fix, fix mode. And yeah. I just needed time to just, Hey, this is where I'm at. Um, and then I think you just seeming so disengaged. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, yeah, I, that used to hurt me a yeah. lot. And so I, I pulled away and by pulling away, that didn't help us. I didn't. And I, I, I just look back at those times. Right. And I just think to myself, I, I didn't know how to do romance. Mm. I didn't have a working model of what a good relationship looks like. Mm. I didn't see it with the people I did closest ministry with. And I never saw it. Like I never saw it in the church and I'm not blaming the church. I, I, like I love the church. I think the church is beautiful. It's been good to me. Yeah. There's always going to be good and bad in everything. Right. Um, by and large, I've had nothing but great experiences. Um, but I just didn't have a working model. You've taught me so much of just traditions and what do we do at Easter and Christmas? How do we build family? It's been always amazing. But I look at that time and I think I was just so trapped in my head because we were also fighting for our life in the sense of building a life together. We yeah. planted a church. And I say that because, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard, right? Like as a man, you got to be home. If you're not home, you can't love your wife. You can't hang out with your kids. But if you're home, most men don't have the opportunity to provide for their kids right. and, and their wife. And we were planting and it was going. And I say that because I think what's becoming apparent to me as we're talking out loud is that just because you live with someone doesn't mean you full, you have full insights into their world. Yeah. You know, just because you sleep with someone doesn't mean you have full insights into their world and, and you were trapped in a world. And I can see even you saying that, like, I wasn't interested in you and you're here trying to find value in the things you say right. and that you have depth. And I'm here zoned out thinking, how are we going to pay rent next week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was just the enemy thrives in darkness. And if there's anything we can leave you with as you repair your marriage mm. is just take everything that you've stored, take everything you've been hidden, hiding, and that is hurting mm. and bring it out. Yeah. And if you both can make the decision to understand rather than be right, because I think one of the things that shifted in us is we just wanted to win. We didn't want to be right. Yeah. Like we wanted to get this going for our kids. We wanted to get yes. it going because we want to last in ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, we do love each other and, 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 mm -hmm. and we want it to work. So yeah. I think that's what in our conversation today is like leaping out at me as if anyone could grab to something is yeah. own it, bring it out, seek to understand, yeah, like learn your person, learn your person, learn their language, be big enough to know that it's not always personal. Mm. Like anything that we're going through is just us and, We've had big conversations worth diving into way more of it. Yeah. All the nitty gritty of what we've gone through, but um, that's where we're at today. Yes. That's all we have time for. Yes. But in the next episode, let's read the rest of those questions. We're going to talk through things like what what's okay in the bedroom? Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, we've had questions on uh, what is considered, considered abuse or violence in the bedroom. Mm. What is, uh, where is the line of what is sex? We're going to talk about mm -hmm. uh, what do you do if you come from a separate, like from two different marriages with abuse and infidelity, but the new marriage doesn't have that but you're still carrying that mm, stuff yep. uh, and, and many other questions that the people have answered, asked and we're going to dive into it. And again, hopefully this sets you up uh, to keep moving forward and, and for your best day. Awesome. Thanks again for joining us on this episode on relationships. We'll see you again soon. See you soon.